Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our council meeting today of November the 8th, 2022. The time is 1.01 p.m. I'll call this meeting to order at this time. And at this time, I'll read the land acknowledgement. We respectively acknowledge that the Township of Asphodel Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and in the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curve Lake, Hiawatha, Alderville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island's First Nations. We respectively acknowledge that the Williams Treaty's First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. At this time, <clears throat> I'll ask Council for a moment of silent reflection so that we may reflect upon our duties of today as counselors. Thank you. Is there any declaration of any pecuniary interest at this time or a time of subject? <clears throat> All right, seeing no hands, thank you. Looking then for a motion to approve the minutes of uh, the October 18th, 2022 meeting, the special meeting held October the 19th, and the special meeting held November the 2nd, 2022, be adopted as presented. Motion by Deputy Mayor Burt, seconded by Councillor Archer. All in favor? And that's carried. Is there any business arising from those minutes at this time? All right, seeing no hands, thank you. The consent agenda is quite large, it's correspondence for information. We have C1 through C7, um, and then staff reports R1 through R5. And then we have the minutes of the Asphodel Norwood Police Services Board, the Asphodel Norwood Public Library Board, and the Special Projects Committee. And the recommendations that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood approves the consent agenda as circulated. Councillor Walsh, seconded by. Councillor War, is there any questions or concerns or comments about any of these that I've mentioned? Deputy Mayor Burt, please. Uh, yeah, just there's a few. I just want to pull the question. Um, C4, R2, R3, and R5. R2, R3? Yep. And, and R5. R5. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else's others or I can get right in? Oh, uh, I, I two more just the uh, same thing. The comment would be C2 and C3. C3. <coughs> Anyone else? Um, yeah, it was uh, C, uh, C2, C3, and then the uh, a couple that already uh, Deputy Mayor Bird also pulled. So uh, just comments on those. Okay. okay. When it comes to that time, yes. Thank you. No problem. All right. Um, so we have a motion. It's all in favor, right? Did I do that? So. No, you can ask some your comments oh. and questions before we go. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll start then. Laurie, go ahead. You might as well do yep. them all. Okay, online. I'll do online and then. Okay, that's fine. Thank uh, you. C4 Orca. Um, thanks for the detailed report from uh, from their staff. And I just wondered. Um, I couldn't remember as a new council. Did we have a delegation from Orca? come to speak to us at the start of the term. I believe we did, but mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, will they be coming again? Mm -hmm. And do have they ever come to us to give their budget report in the past? I don't believe they have. They but did once, and they, it was okay. when the new CAO took over, he delivered the budget at the oh, same time did? for the same Oh, visit. that's right, too. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. do you foresee that coming for, like not for this Here's time, because obviously the budget's here. Would you foresee in future years them being able to come forward if we have any more questions? Questions or present the budget? Both present the budget and ask I think if you'd, you'd have questions. to request it because I don't okay. think it's part of their regular okay. routine. I think, I think a couple but... of townships have. Do you, actually, you know, you're the yeah, uh, They do put out the request if anyone wants delegation. Oh, okay. they'd be more than happy to come for that. You okay. have to ask okay. them. Just if we can get you have to ask them. It might be something moving forward. Um, I know the new CAO is coming the first quarter of 2023. Okay. Once the new councils get in and formed right. and settled, she's going to do a tour. Okay. Good. I don't I don't know the exact date yet, though. Okay. Nope, that's good. Um, so that was my first question. Um, R2, um, 
I just wanted to say it's uh, 45 file or files in the past two quarters have come to a close and they're compliant for the for the bylaw enforcement. So that's very, very good to see. Um, R3, and, and I know Daryl's not here today, the addressing the mandatory certification process for the firefighters. Um, and we've certainly been compliant now and in the past. So for us, we're lucky. Do you? No, there's certainly, I'm sure, other smaller municipalities that haven't been so lucky. How are they going to bring this forward? And do you see some fire stations or communities having to amalgamate just because of that? Have we heard of that at all? Because it's going to be tough for some smaller municipalities. Um, there has been conversation at the CAO table in regards to municipalities looking at amalgamations of fire departments, but not because of this legislation. Oh, it's more okay. from a difficulty of recruit oh, recruitment. Okay. Um, there's two municipalities in Peterborough County that struggle with recruiting uh, volunteer firefighters. So that has sparked the conversations. It's never gotten any traction, okay. but it's just one of those things that get gets thrown out as a problem solving right. uh, possibility when they're struggling. If you don't have the pager goes off, if there's nobody yeah. to respond, then that's a problem. Um, this this legislation hasn't sparked that conversation that I'm aware of or that okay. I've participated in. There is, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one municipality in Peterborough County that I'm aware of that has a, a bit of an uphill battle for budget, but they have come out with some uh, funding. We just got some information. Oh, so I think it. there's going to be some opportunities for municipalities to get some money okay. to help because fund it was, them. It was really thrown on municipalities fairly quickly and it was. not given much lead time at all to, to get those certifications up so I was just wondering no I think that. when they changed the legislation they they did listen okay they listened yeah, they to did. municipalities and yeah. they did soften the language of the okay. legislation to assist those that mm -hmm. that's what really the only reason we're in such a good position is because they softened the language yeah. and they allowed the grandfathering the grandfather. if yeah. they didn't allow that we would be having a much different conversation okay. it wouldn't be in the consent agenda could <laughs> <laughs> be a full report yeah okay and my last one r5 um that is Seamus's report and uh thanks for a, another very detailed report he does a great job mm -hmm. um, i just wanted to ask um certainly he mentioned about the western ball field it's not the first time he mentioned it um and it's certainly not rented out due to the condition i, I was there this morning and even myself i could probably hit a home run into the trees at this point in time but that's right so, play. yeah so <laughs> so but i do know it's been used informally you do see some kids out there and you know pitching and that sort of thing um I, I'm just wondering if as we move forward with the uh, with the you know recreation master plan and that sort of thing, um, looking at use for that green space, you know, certainly we can keep the backstop there, but maybe it's a matter of putting a couple of soccer nets um, out in that field because the field itself looks decent. I didn't go out there this morning to see how rough it was, but I'm just wondering um, what if we could use that space for something else as well. Um, like a dual purpose space? Yeah, um, because there's a lot of green space. Like I say, there is, got yeah. excellent ball field here where that's not going to change and that we don't need two ball fields when we've got the use of the high school field. But it would be nice to see something done with that space. Um, we can take your comment and circle back around to it. We'll pull the five-year parks plan because okay. I think there's some upgrades scheduled for there Westwood. Is, I think one I'd of like them was a picnic shelter. shelter. Yeah. I'll have to pull it and see. I don't think there was anything proposed in regards to soccer nets, but yeah. um, when we bring the draft parks department okay. budget, yeah. um, we'll see what we can incorporate there to the five-year park plan and maybe mm -hmm. count, we can make a recommendation for council to amend it to include something and then it yeah. can be a motion to the council. Nice it might get a little bit more use. Um, okay. That way. So, just a thought. Okay. Um, and that's what I have. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Walsh. I try to just put my bit, if I can, just build on this. Sure. Is again, um, well, canvassing certainly pickleball became a great thing. I know we're looking at being able to do something over here with the old skateboard park, but that may be an option to consider for, for the Western Park as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Could potentially become a little more more right now. Um, the other two I had was C2 regarding heating. Actually, we did call them last week as follow up from the election. I did ask them about the travel, uh, they're doing a travel uh, document intake clinic here. Um, still the backlog, but he did indicate that hopefully in Q1 of 2023 that they would be able to. Uh, 
come out and post some, some comments on there. Yeah. And then the second one is just B3 regarding the uh, Ontario Wildlife Damage Compensation Program. It's just, again, it's just nice to understand that our governor is listening um, and, and increasing those claims from five to 10. I know it did reach out to Candace regarding whether we had many, if any farmers that ever reached that threshold. And my understanding is no. Um, probably steel from their PD sheep farm, uh, which is now top pain. But again, it is, it's just nice to know that there is that flexibility that they have increased it for those that potentially do have to deal with that issue. Yeah. Councillor Floor. Thank you, Drew. Um, I, so C2 was uh, basically covered by Councillor Walsh, but I just wanted to add my thanks to staff for sending that correspondence to us because I think it's really important for our residents to have that uh, here in a rural area where they might not be able to get their passports and other documentations updated. So thanks for reaching out. That's You're welcome. Happens. You're welcome. Um, C3, um, yes, the wildlife compensation. I think it's timely that it's on this agenda with um, the other bylaw that we're discussing later on. So I think that melds well. And um, on to, uh, I think it was R5 and um, about the park locations. I, I was just curious what park um, uh, was the most heavy usage this summer. And the second was um, the portable toilets that are at some of the locations. Um, do they have to be um, like the health board uh, compliant? Like, is there certain um, recommendations so where you have a porta potty that they have to be compliant with the health um, department? <laughs> Anyways, those are, that's my question. Okay. Um... It's funny when you mentioned porta potties, that may be the only way to know the most used park <laughs> because we don't track numbers, yes. obviously, as to who's going to, how many go in on a weekend. We, as staff, go to empty garbages and whatnot. We can tell by the garbage, garbages and porta potty use, and definitely it's community center and Asphodel Park as to which one would win. Don't know. It would be it would be uh, very close. I think they're very different uses, and they attract a different complement of a person or family. Um, and the second part of your question, um, we need to provide a certain amount of accessible porta potty. So there's an accessible unit at Asphodel Park, and then we need to ensure that there's either a hand washing station or a hand sanitizer pump in each unit. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That it for questions, Council? All right. So we have a motion and it's seconded. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is delegations and presentations. So uh, we have uh, Daryl here. If you want to step up to the chair there, Daryl, and have a seat, that'd be great. And this has got to do with the outdoor community rink. And Council has asked uh, Daryl to come today to. Uh, Hit him with some tough questions, and he's probably going to hit you back with some tough answers and questions. So it's just pretty wide open and easy going. So Perfect. we'd like to start. So am I starting or are you guys starting? Tell us your dream, Daryl. My dream, my vision. Okay, so uh, we we spoke last year at the Norwood Minor Hockey Committee about having an outdoor rink, but it was near the end of the year there. This year, I brought up again last month was in October, and I said we should maybe do that. I just, I was bored one afternoon, so I went out and asked a few people what they thought. Can we put it here? Can we put it there? And it seemed that it was a very positive feedback. Everyone was interested in doing this. So I met with Candace here, and we discussed a little more, and that's why I'm here today. Um, as the, I guess as the two of us, we, we decided that it would be best if it was up in the uh, baseball diamond. Um, Carter's a volunteer to form it, so uh, as a donation to the town there. Uh, we have to buy the tarp is about seven hundred dollars that fits inside that would build about uh you're going to be 48 by about 98 or like rink size or skating size um it's it's being delivered to a local business there i i haven't talked to anybody about you know donating that yet because it hasn't been approved i don't want to buy a tarp until it is approved type of thing but i'm sure someone will uh come good for that uh we had a discussion about insurance um if minor hockey ensures that it can only be insured for minor hockey players, that's where the township would have to come in. If it's going to be used for public skating, it would have to be a township. But I would believe there would be a blanket policy on all the uh, parks on that, regardless if there's an arena or not, like the skate park. 
an outdoor rink would all be covered on the same blanket policy, but I don't know. Like I don't pay your insurance or have your policy in front of me. So I don't know that. Um, as, far as, as far as volunteers, I spoke with, uh, and I don't want to speak for him either. Uh, Daryl Payne said that there was a possibility that the uh, fire department could help uh, flood it. Okay, and I spoke with Seamus about what his availability would be. I don't know if this is volunteer time or if it's going to be taken over from the town as a paid, we're going to look after a position. That's up to, again, I don't run the town or anything like that, so I don't know what to say there. I would think if it was a volunteer, basically we need about eight volunteers, probably two public, two for minor hockey, two from the fire department, maybe two from the town. We would be able to, I think it's about 10 hours a week of flooding it out to get the flooded every day. It would be based on use, but I, I think arena that size would be flooded in an hour, probably and scraped off. It's just an outdoor rink. They're not, uh, it's not as prestige as this one, obviously. Um, Usage of it is where it gets a little more interesting, at least at the ballpark. There's a, there's good dugouts there where you can sit, get your skates on. They're well covered. Um, the issue is getting up the hill there would have to be maintained. Um, I don't know if there's equipment to do that or what the policy would be there to get up the hill. But um, again, with the ballpark, it can be, I believe there is locks to, I know the fence is low, but it could be locked out completely. So there is some kind of protection to keep people off that night. Um, it could be used at nights on special nights or uh, there is lighting there. That's uh, again up to the town. I don't think any other community does do that. I've never seen Havelocks used at night, but um, I know Havelock and Hastings were very busy and popular last uh, last uh, season. They do quite a bit of uh, skate and kids play hockey on it. Um, again, where the town would be more utilized would be to schedule it if someone did want to book it or whatever, or utilize it for a hockey game or something like that, or if it was delegated, designated for public state at certain times, that would be where the town, someone like Seamus would have to step in with his crew to say, you know, post on like the social media pages between the township and minor hockey, this is public state time, this is open ice time or whatever. Um, other than that, um, yeah, so uh, I would recommend that there would be like a, a donation box for any of the use that it does get, whether people paid four or six dollars to go to the food bank or back to the fire department if they have the most volunteers or something or something like that within the township. Um, I think that's it. So, but I just, uh, like I say, I don't speak on behalf of that. at the town. I don't know if the fire department is allowed to even flood that or if they would or if the township would help out or. Okay. I don't know if you want me to get all the volunteers and come back. That's uh, another option too. So I think, need to borrow your hose. Thank you. <laughs> I think uh, I'll let Candace uh, speak to uh, say insurance wise and a few things like that, just to clarify before council starts to talk about or ask any questions, just oh. to help clarify anything that might be out there that uh, might be misconstrued. Say. Okay. Um, when it comes to insurance, yes, it would have to be added to the township insurance policy as a, a new activity. Um, as I don't foresee it being uh, any financial implication to adding it. We've added other activities. We've added the basketball court um, to the community center park. We've added other amenities to our parks and we just add it to the list of uh, recreational amenities on the policy. Um, so I don't foresee um, adding um, that. It's more of the liability perspective. Ensuring the asset isn't the issue, it's the liability. Um, so I'd have to reach out to our insurance company. I mean, insuring the asset isn't a big deal. It's more if someone was to get hurt by utilizing utilizing the space. So we'd have to uh, touch base with them. It's my understanding that Hastings and Havelock, it is an ad hoc, it's a committee of community members and they um, are self-insured. So they, provi they provide indemnification of the municipality um, and the committee has their own insurance and then they identify the municipal property in which the asset is located on. So it is slightly different than I think that what's being proposed here. Mm -hmm. As far as the fire department flooding the ice, uh, the fire chief has spoke, I mean, we don't do anything for uh, public property such as spilling swim, swimming pools and that sort of thing as council knows, but flooding, uh, you know, doing the initial flood and setup of the outdoor rink um, from an administration standpoint, we would have no concerns unless council says otherwise. Um, so it's really the formation 
it's the structure. Is it going to be a municipal, municipally ran asset where, you know, we, it's on our property, we get it up and running, maybe we have some volunteers, then I would recommend to council for insurance purposes in case those volunteers were to get injured that we have a committee um, that's actually appointed by council that those members are appointed to some sort of committee, whether it's a recreational committee, an outdoor rate committee, and then um, at least those volunteers and the committee has been formed properly um, outside. And that's assuming that the volunteers would be assisting a municipally run asset to operate. If it's a committee and they're just looking to use the township's property, then that's a different conversation. So really figuring out how you want this to form and whether it's gonna be a committee of council or a committee of the community, because I, I know township staff couldn't take care of it all on on their own. Um, we just don't have, in the winter time, we don't have the staffing to be able to keep that clean. And I guarantee our phone will ring on Christmas morning, wondering why it's not shoveled. Um, you know, those are when we don't have staff in. Um, so those are my initial thoughts off the top of my head. Yep, thank you. So we'll open it up to council. Deputy Mayor Burke, please. Uh, thank you to you. Um, I guess this question is mostly for Candace or for Daryl, you may know. Um, for the volunteer insurance costs, do you have any idea what that costs that group of volunteers and these things to have on for their insurance? No. No? Because I think that would be key to find that out. Or, I have no idea. Because I'd, I'd like to make a decision before, you know, if it's minus 20, but I'd really like to see the costs both ways, like what it would cost volunteer group to do it, and then from the standpoint of what would it cost the township to do it, and and kind of the division of roles and all of that. So I think to make a decision, I think we need to see both scenarios. And um, either way, I'd, I'd love to see it. I think it's a great idea. I think, you know, we certainly get a lot of support in the community, um, but uh, I, from a cost standpoint and taxpayers standpoint, I, I'd really like to see those broken down somehow. Um, I don't know where you start with that, but uh, well, I, the cost. Is it, do you want me to answer, Mayor? Yes, please. Okay. Um, from a cost perspective to the municipality, outside of having the liability insurance conversation with our insurer, I mean, flooding it isn't much of a cost. We have to keep the lights on right now, uh, at least one light. Well, because of this um, renovation, this build that's happening here. But again, that's only one season. So if we want to keep the lights on, if we want to leave it in the same location next year, then there would be some hydro implications. Um, it's more the staffing. That's the biggest, I think, financially from a municipality perspective to actually have, if the capital costs are donated, the upfront costs are donated, it's the staffing, like it's very, very minimal. Now, if we have to go out and buy the tarp and we have to buy the forms and, and we're not getting those community donations, then that's a different conversation. But based on this delegation, I would present it in such a way that those are being donated. So then the operating costs, once you remove the staffing is very, very minimal. Um, I can, we can try to reach out to the, find out who is the head of those committees in the community. Um, in Havelock and Hastings and find out how much they pay for insurance. Mm -hmm. um, but we spoke to the municipalities directly and we didn't ask that question and I don't know if they know. Right, right. Um, no idea. One yep. follow up? And I guess this is for you, Daryl. Um, based on your conversation within the community, um, if you went with the, that volunteer base to you know keep it clean and keep it shoveled and help with the flooding, um, would you have enough volunteers to help through the course of the winter? Like instead of eight, maybe you'd need 12 or 15. I'm just. Well, wondering. if you get, if you get too many, it just, it gets into confusion yeah, because yeah, it, so eight, eight, I think is, and that was based on like the fire department flooding it. That was right. their, their sole thing was, okay, we come in and flood it. That was their volunteer stuff. The township, their volunteer stuff. I know they got the snow blower or whatever. They just do the pathway up to there. That was their for this or that. And then for myself, I guess, personally, like, or the Norwood Minor Hockey, we would say that part of the committee would look after shoveling the ice surface and keeping it. So it would kind of be broke up, like, so Seamus and these guys aren't going to be out there shoveling, you know, unless there's a, a torrential snowfall, they're, they're giving you a hand because they got time or whatever, but there would be people allocated, yeah. but, but flooding would be, like, let's be honest, by the time I come here, get the hose out, 
the fire department's already got it done because they already got the hose. They got a place to store it. They put it away. It doesn't freeze up. Yeah. You know, Seamus has a snow. He's already doing the parking lot. He does that. It's done. And then we come up and shovel off the rink. And so, you know, my committee might be four or five people, but I think like, you know, Seamus delegates. This is what we look after is just cleaning this part up. Daryl Payne says, okay, they look after the flood portion. I, I think if you flooded it, like you'd flood that thing in an hour a night if you had, and I don't know if you'd have to do it every night or not, but if you did it five times a week, you know, or based on you, Seamus would be able to tell you, like he'd be able to walk up and say, it needs a flood, it doesn't need a flood, right? So, mm -hmm. but I think flood would be like a 10 hour a week. You know, you're putting water to it and it's breathing. It. It's not a, so I don't know, like I'm just here to Yeah, say, yeah, no, I don't need that. So. question, thank you. Yeah, I just had a comment then when you said that just for clarification, then you'd you think that the fire department would do that five times a week? Then is well, that what you would be asking? You'd, you'd have to it'd have to be assessed. Like if it doesn't get used, like if it was minus 40 and the rink sitting there, you wouldn't flood it, right? Because no one was on it. But if there was like people on it from noon till six o'clock, like I think again, like someone like uh like Seamus that's over here be able to say, yeah, Daryl, you need to flood the rink tonight because you know we're Whoever Daryl was signed to, like I think there was there was three or four people that are on the fire department or minor hockey that would be willing to volunteer for that. So it wouldn't be Daryl Payne coming up necessarily to do it, but right. obviously he'd have to be involved in it. And... Do you have a follow? -up? Yeah, I do know that in Hastings and Havelock, I know in Hastings they had to run a dedicated water line to the location, and the fire department just does the initial setup, and then it's flooded with a water line that's dedicated to that spot, and they have their own little flooding equipment. The fire department doesn't flood it on a on a right. They just do the initial yeah. setup, and then the regular floods is done by the committee with, I think they have like this homemade, but I know that's Hastings for sure. Yeah, so it's have, yeah, you just have like a little wand that mm -hmm. you walk across and yeah. flood it, flood yeah. it and all that. So. Yeah. So I don't know necessarily if the Fire department could, I'm just talking you know, about do whatever employees, employees yeah. the fire department that were involved. Uh, like, so asking tough questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Council? Uh, um, wait, sorry. Uh, um, uh, Councillor Ward. Uh, thank you, Chief Premier. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be a lovely addition to, uh, to the community. And I think that the location with the lights and the seating to change of skates, like there couldn't be a better spot. Uh, my only concern would be having enough volunteers to make sure that it was shoveled and flooded because I don't know if the fire department could use, you know, be available that many times to do the flood. I, I'm wondering about the cost of a dedicated water line and how much that would cost. And that's another question. So that's yeah. just my comments. I think it's a great idea though. Well, I, I think we can push pause because the water race water operations manager will be here um and then within the hour to present a couple of reports we can ask him we i know we only have one outside hose bib on this facility because we ran into it with uh this renovation and it's at the back uh zamboni door um but as far as any difficulty getting a line up that hill i think that's a great question to ask kyle hey uh, well, from my perspective daryl I, I love the idea um Gets kids out away from this all day long. I'm excited for it's better. Um, and not every not every family can afford to have their kids playing organized minor hockey. So this provides another great alternative for families, uh, another outdoor activity for kids. Um, scheduling. If we had a scheduling nightmare, that would actually be a good problem. That means it's being used a lot. So I think scheduling. You know what? We'll. We'll kind of figure out how that should be, or the committee figures out how it should be. Uh, that would be an awesome problem in my mind to have that we've got too many people using it. We'd have to now get a, a set schedule. And so that means it's, people want it and are using yeah. it. So that would be a good thing. Yeah. Um, and I, I haven't talked, I know the fellow that runs one over there, I haven't talked to how they schedule or if they yeah. do any scheduling over there either, but it would just be that's where the town would be. I anticipate ours would be a bit more busier than Havelock's. Like it's, I, I think ours would be a little bit better, more, more. I think it'd be used more, like utilized more. So, and for people that want to use it for public skating, I would hate to see them deterred by kids playing hockey. And you know what I mean? Like, there should be certain times where it is public skating. And, you know, hockey can be from this time to that time, yeah. but public skating can be from this time if you want to do it or yeah. whatever. So, for and sure. Honestly, we could figure out between maybe minor hockey can take the scheduling piece off. 
Yeah, it could be posted on. Like I say, you would just you would simply post on like the the township webs or yeah. Facebook page and the minor hockey Facebook page and public seat in the outdoor rink at this time. You know, no hockey at this time and hockey at this time. So. Yeah. I did ask that question to Hastings and Havelock, and they have no schedules. First come, first serve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't want. But I, I, but I obviously want they've ran into no serve. conflict as of yet. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want someone playing hockey for four hours when okay. someone wants exactly. to move their kids out skate. So I would yeah. say, you know, between the hours of on Sunday, between this hour and that hour, there's it's outdoor public skating. Public skate, yeah. And then after that, it's whatever you want, right? Yeah. At least there would be something allocated to say, you know, Everyone has a chance to take their grandkids out skating outside, right, or whatever. Yeah. So, um, I, I can get more volunteers, and I'm more than happy to head a head a committee to look after the flood and all that. Um, that's fine. I would I would like to. Um, I know the town is thinking about building a permanent one. I think this is a better solution than a permanent one. It is very cheap. I think if you did this for like, let's be honest, we got to buy a seven hundred dollar tarp. I'd like to see it, like you guess at least get three years of use because it would be a waste. So, you know, like uh, I, I would hate to see the town build one next year and say, here, let's do that. And then the tarp just gets thrown out or put aside, right? Like someone's got to pay for it, whether it be minor hockey or somebody else has got to be purchased. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's, I, I agree with Candace. That is a great location. I think uh, um, like I, I, I got a few plans for minor hockey to do some outdoor games with the smaller kids and all that to try and get some people in the stands like the Diane Kell does. It's a very popular thing right now. Um, so, but that's all, like I say, like I apologize for not being as organized as uh, maybe I should have been to come here, but it's just, uh, it's one of them things I just, it's on a whim and uh, just, you got to keep pushing forward with it, right? Like uh, I think we're all on the same page and whatever we got to do to make it work then let's do it and uh if you want to be volunteers and i'll uh i'll give you a list of volunteers and if you want to be involved in it then uh i i strongly believe the town and the, i know they don't have the time all up but the, the town should oversee the the uh facility i believe is will be more successful and more so just my opinion it's the liability part the, the yeah. part that that would hurt the most necessarily if the board's Somebody got hurt or something, on something, or somebody yeah. got a uh, just a sharp edge off a board and got cut. Like yeah. who's who's responsible? Who's up for what? And and anybody and everybody wants to sue in today's world. So that's mm. that's just yeah. the life of the township, yeah. basically. But uh, is there any more questions from council at this time, Jordan and Daryl? All right, then we probably need a motion then to send this to the action list. Then whether for that sure. makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Councillor. Yeah, I will put a motion on the floor that we uh, we move this forward on the action list of the potential project for this coming winter. Second. Second. Councillor Archer. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Let's put a date to it. November twenty oh, second. This, this winter. November twenty second. Staff yeah. report back. Okay. Yeah, we can have it back. Yeah. November twenty second. Find this of the essence. Well, it's yeah. perfect time to get it formed and set up yeah. there right now, right? Because it's yeah. So yeah. we meet again in two weeks, so we'll have a report okay. back in two weeks. And yeah. So what would you need from me in two? Can someone send me a kindly an email? What you expect from me in two weeks? There and I will. Uh, I will I'll get be that. in touch. So, okay. I'll be one of the volunteers. I'll. Uh, I'm gonna go buy a tarp today to just make sure you just have to do it then. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Um, is it uh, all in favor? And that's carried unanimous. Okay, thank you, Daryl. Thank you. All right, take care. So next on our uh, agenda then is a delegation, and it's Joanna Park, uh, Baker Tilly, and you want to bring thank your. You. Your other helper up. Well, it is for the hard questions. So we'll, we'll, uh, <laughs> Actually, we'll back. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, uh, this, uh, delegation has got to do with our financial statements of the township of Asphodel Northern. So, Joanna, the floor is yours. Please. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I, as I mentioned, I do have John Hickey here. Uh, he was the manager on the audit. So I'm here to present and he's here to get all the hard questions. So. <laughs> As long as everyone knows their position. <laughs> um, I know you have the paper copies in front of you now. 
um, we're just flip through it. What this presentation is, you in your packages, you had the financial statements as well as a letter from us. We call it kind of the post audit letter. This is the presentation that kind of summarizes the main points in those, but I'm at the end of the presentation, happy to address any questions from the other two documents. So we start with the auditor's report and we just give you the um, main paragraph, which is the second paragraph of the auditor's report. And uh, this is what you're, you want to see when it's attached to the financial statements. It's this paragraph and it says, in our opinion, the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the township at December 31st, 2021. So this is a clean auditor's opinion. The, it does go on to say that the statements are in accordance with Canadian sector accounting board standards. And that's what you as a municipality have to follow. So this is what you want to see overall when you get your audited financial statements. We are required on the next slide to tell you um, what we do as part of our audit. So we review council minutes. Uh, we look at the closed and the open sessions to make sure that anything financial is reflective in your financial records. So um, we've done that. We do all our substantive testing. We do you know, random sampling. We do analytical review. We look at management's estimates to make sure they're reasonable. We look at all your main systems and we look at the controls that you have in place. So the main systems being your money going in, your money going out. So the revenue, um, your disbursements, your payroll, uh, journal entry testing, that kind of thing to make sure. And if we had any recommendations, we would bring them forward on the controls that you have in place. But we don't at this time have any recommendations on uh, uh, controls. So that's that's a good thing. The audit is complete uh, pending council's approval of the financial statements. Once that happens, um, then we um, will get our legal letters. We are a little bit behind. I apologize. We're really pushing to get to this stage in council. Um, so we will send out legal letters, make sure that they're, you know, confirmation that there's no outstanding legal issues. And then once we get those back from the lawyers, then we can do the finalization process. We didn't have any significant difficulties or any, you can cross the word significant. We didn't have any difficulties during the audit. Obviously, everyone is busy. Um, there was, uh, you know, I don't want to say a time crunch. There was some delays in there, but we got there. Um, no changes in our initial audit plan in that there was nothing changed how we had to audit it. Um, we had no disagreements or difficulties with management and excellent cooperation as we've come to expect. Um, most of the audit was done in person at year end. So that was kind of, that was nice to do for sure. Uh, makes things a lot easier on both parties for sure. It's hard mm -hmm. on your end, um, definitely to do an audit virtually. So uh, we were able to and happy to be able to do that in person. And we don't have any uncorrected audit differences. Now we get into the numbers. So we start, what we've done is we've taken your financial statements and put them in in different segments. So we start with the financial assets or assets that can more easily be converted into cash. Um, your largest one being your cash and temporary investments. Um, it's gone down. We show a five-year trend, but really looking at 2020 versus 2021, um, your cash has gone down from 5.8 million to 5.3 million, which is expected. You have a, a large amount of receivables. You had a large amount of capital purchases during the year. So obviously it's just going to go up and down just depending on timing of payments. You have a uh, $50,000 in short-term investments that's been there forever. That's the cemetery. Uh, that's within your financial statements. Trade and accounts receivable, that's the big one that you'll notice on here, $2.9 million. And that's up from previous years because you have your um, ICIP funding for center, um, center of line. Um, so that funding you get uh, after you've submitted um, for the payments. And so that just hadn't been received at the end of December. Your taxes receivable, 341,000. You look at that, that's a great number when even looking at the five-year trend, but definitely between 2020 to 2021. Uh, your percentage in 2020 was 8.1%. So what that percentage is, is the total amount levied during the year um, compared to the amount you have a receivable at the end of the year. So 8.1%. In 2021, you're at 5.4%. To put that into guideline, like that's an excellent percentage anyway, but the ministry, uh, their guideline is 10%. So even last year, you know, when it was a little bigger, you're still well below the ministry average, which is great. So uh, staff need to be commended because obviously they're, you know, picking up the phone or they're doing the letters like they should be to make sure that those uh, taxes are getting Being paid. popular. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not probably winning any friends, unfortunately. <laughs> and then the last one is assets uh, held for resale. Most of that's um, the inventory at the canteen and the at the community center, as well as some plots and niches at the cemetery. And then the following slide is just the graphical representation. Um, sometimes a picture is uh, easier to see. You can see. Obviously there, the big green one is your cash and temporary investments being your largest financial asset. 
and seeing the trends there. And then of course this year, the blue being the funding receivable and, and that's just a timing difference. Then we look at your financial liabilities, the amounts owing at the end of the year. Um, accounts payable and accrued liabilities, again, an increase there to $2.28 million. And that's just because of uh, the sewer capital, road capital that was being done at the end of the year and the timing of when the payments were due. Your obligatory reserve funds, that's the amounts you have on hand at the end of the year, $1.1 million. So you have that money in your bank account and that's uh, $940,000 for development charges. 119,000 for gas tax and 81,000 for parkland. So those are the amounts that you have that will be used in the future uh, for future projects. Your deferred revenue, that's other types of revenue that you received or funding um, that haven't been spent. And at the end of the 2021, that's your cannabis, um, your cannabis funding. You had spent all your safe restart funding, um, which is why the decrease there from 2020 to 2021. And then your long-term debt, $1.3 million. That's the OCFA loan you've had for a number of years now and just no new loans. It's just going down with your principal payments over the years. And then your landfill closure and post-closure, that's your biggest uh, estimate on your financial statement. So that's the estimate of the future monitoring costs for Asphodel site, which was closed in 2010. And then now with the um, Norwood site that uh, will include the closure costs as well as then the monitor in the future. So that is an estimate on how much it's going to cost. And then of course, um, the net present value of all that as well. And then the following slide is the graphical representation. Again, you can see the blue one being your accounts payable and that's just gonna fluctuate depending on the timing. And then you can see kind of that, uh, the rust colored one going down being your long-term debt. The following slide is just a kind of a summary. It shows the net financial assets at the top $2.8 million. That's the two slides we've seen, the financial assets minus the total liabilities, 2.8 million. And then your tangible capital assets. That's the assets that you have that you're going to use for more than a year. That's the net or the net book value of those minus accumulated amortization. So the expensing over the useful life, 33.9 million. It's gone up and that's because your additions were more than your amortization during the year. And we'll see the breakdown of that further on. And then that gives you an accumulated surplus of $36.8 million, which we'll see further on in the slides. The following slide is just a summary of your revenue and expenses during the year compared to your budget. So in total, your revenues of almost $9.9 .9 million and your expenses 6.7 to give you a PSAB, not an operating, but a PSAB surplus of $3.1 million to give you that same accumulated surplus of $36.8 million. And again, we're gonna see the detail of those further on, but that's kind of the snapshot. And then the following slide looks at your accumulated surplus of $36.8 million. And how much of that has already been invested in capital assets? So you'll see the big gap there. And it's been consistent the last three years, the gap between the accumulated surplus and the tangible capital assets. And what that means is that that gap is how much you have um, to invest in other things that you haven't already invested in capital assets. So that's your reserves net of the liability for landfill. So that's, you want to see that gap. You don't want to all your money um, tied up in your assets. You want to be able, you want to have it for future projects. And then the following slide looks at the revenue versus the expenses and then the annual surplus. So the difference there um, this year compared to other years is because you had a large amount of capital funding. So the capital funding gets recognized all in the, in the current year you get it. But then of course the associated expenses are gonna be expensed over the life of the asset. So it's kind of that, uh, that oddity. It's, uh, it makes it look really good, but in reality, that's why we have to look at the operating surplus. <laughs> <clears throat> now we look at the total revenue. So you budgeted $8.1 million. Your total revenues were just under $9.9 .9 million. Uh, your largest revenue is property taxation of $3.6 million. Look at user charges. Uh, you had budgeted almost $1.6 million. Actual was $1.9 million. And that's uh, almost entirely because of building permits. Your building permits were $270,000 over budget. So I'm sure that's not a surprise <laughs> to anybody. Uh, your government of Canada funding, most of that's your ISIP funding. And then your province of Ontario, almost $1.7 million. Um, that's made up of your OMPF funding of 709000 
the provincial share of the ICIP funding of 640,000. Um, you have some OSIP funding as well as that, as well as modernization funding and your COVID funding is also in there. So kind of a little bit of everything in that $1.7 million. Well, looking at other significant items there, your other revenue of 289,000, that's kind of a different number this year. And that's a reimbursements from the developer uh, for work done in the subdivision. So they, you, you pay for it and then they give you 75% uh, of the funds back. So that's showing as revenue. And that was most of the 289,000 there. And then the developer contributions earned and the federal gas tax earned, that's the amount um, of uh, amounts you've received and spent during the year. So that's not just the amount you've received, that's the amount you've spent on the various construction projects during the year. The rest, the amount unspent is still sitting in the obligatory reserve funds. So that gives you $9.9 .9 million of revenue. And then the following slide just shows a pie chart or, you know, to see where your revenue is coming from 37% this year from property taxation, and then not, almost 20% from user charges and 17% from the properties. And then your expenses um, under PSAB we're required to show expenses two ways. So this is the first way by more or less your departments. Um, everything's pretty comparable. There was a little bit of uh, difference if you look at transportation the budget was 2 million the actual was 2.3 million that's because there was a loss on disposal um, for center line it uh, that road wasn't completely uh, depreciated when the work started happening again so it's it's shown on the financial statements as a loss on disposal and that was about $255,000 um, also under health services um, FIR or the financial information return categories includes the cemetery, ironically, under health services. I've probably made that joke before, um, but uh, there's no budget in the cemetery. So that's why when you look under health, the budget's 30,000, but the actual is 52,000. And it's just because there's no budget for the cemetery. And recreation and cultural services, obviously uh, the budget uh, was hoping that the rec recreation facilities in 2021 would be open the entire year and they weren't uh, for the entire year, which is why we see the discrepancy there compared to budget. And then the following slide again showing 34.6% of your expenses are spent in transportation, 19.2 in protection, and then uh, environmental being 18%. And then the following slide shows the expenses uh, the other way by more type of expense. And you can see pretty comparable when um, a lot of the categories budget to actual uh, salaries when it's $2.2 million, I th think it's within 7,000 of budget there. Um, materials is under budget and that's because of the recreation facilities mostly. And then on that last line there, that's when you see the loss on disposal with most of it being roads. showing your overall expenditures uh, pretty much exactly $100,000 over budget. And that's including the loss on disposal. And then the following slide again, showing the breakdown, 33% being salary and benefits and 26.7% being materials. When we look at the accumulated surplus. So we talked about a $36.8 million accumulated surplus of which 31.9 million is invested in capital assets. So the difference here, um, we can see the township has an operating surplus. That's that second line there, $14,611. So that's the operating surplus. Any other <coughs> remaining surplus has been transferred into reserves. And then we have a negative landfill closure liability and that's because it, uh, it will go through your operating surplus when you actually spend the money. And then the cemetery has a, um, overall surplus of 92,000. And then the remainder is invested in your reserves and reserve funds or allocated to your reserves and reserve funds, $5.8 million, up about 500,000, just under 500,000 from the previous year. Uh, quite often, this is where I get asked, you know, are these reserves enough? Like, do we have enough money put in reserves? So uh, before I get that question, I'll answer it. Um, I can't answer that question. It really just depends on your asset management plan. So that's where that becomes really important in your looking at your capital forecasting. You know, if you had every brand new road here, then I'd say, oh, that's, you know, you probably have too much in your reserves. But if every road was crumbling, then you don't have nearly enough, right? So that's where looking at the capital plan in the future to make sure that uh, 
when those needs are there, and especially if we can't always rely on funding, then maybe making sure that we have the money there or a plan in place uh, to finance it. The next slide does show, though, the trend in your reserves and reserve fund balances, and you can see the, you know, the effort that council has made in uh, since 2019 to put money into your working funds and your overall general reserves as well. And the next slide looks at your capital asset additions. I mentioned you have about $4.3 million in capital asset additions, a lot of them being in your loads and culverts, uh, $2.7 million, about $2 million in, for center line alone, and then other various road projects. And then over a million dollars in your water and sewer as well. So that's where most of your additions are during the year. And the next slide looks at your amount of your capital asset additions uh, and reckon, looking at it compared to the amount of amortization. So this is a good one to look at as a snapshot, especially over a five-year period, because it's important to make sure that you're replacing your assets at a greater rate than you're actually than the amortization. The amortization is based on the historical cost, whereas you, of course, we all know about inflation right now, everything's costing more and more. So you want to make sure you're replacing them at a greater rate. So you can see overall, you know, not every year that's going to happen, but overall that you're definitely doing that. And the next slide looks at just your, for the different uh, asset categories, the remaining useful life. So the green being how much useful life is left and the red, um, not, uh, you know, that it's coming to an end. So the categories with the smaller useful lives, like the vehicles, they're going to, they normally will be more uh, written off than your other assets. So this is just a snapshot, of course. So it's, you really have to dig in a little deeper, but it does give you a snapshot picture. And then the last slide looks at your net financial asset trend. So this is definitely, uh, I don't know, a picture, uh, picture perfect uh, graph here when you can see that trend there. And that's that's just uh, has a lot of different uh, reasons for that, whether it be no new debt, uh, stronger financial asset balances um, to see that trend there. And of course, it's not always going to just keep going like that. <laughs> you are going to have to spend some money at some point, but uh, right now it looks great. <laughs> and that is presentation. Are there any questions? Thank you. Um... I'm just remembering back eight years ago, this was a lot tougher to talk about and understand. And uh, you broke it down and made it quite easy to follow. Thank you very much for that. So, thank you for the feedback. Yeah. Um, Council, any questions at this time? Comments, concerns? Councilor Walsh? Yeah, just clarity. So, under the financial activities revenues, can you just explain the developer contributions earned? What that line yeah, so that's your DCs that you get. Okay. That's the amount you've spent. So that's not just the full, I can tell you exactly what that is. And we really just don't budget for that? Some, sometimes we do. Okay. Sometimes, but sometimes we have expenses that come up and we decide that DCs are going to pay for it throughout the year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so during the year you received in DCs about 809000 and that 682,000 is what you actually spent. Okay, thank you. And then the secondary question to that, if I can, yes. is under other, um, I, I just jotted down payments for work done in Harwood Park phase one, two, three, 289,000. Can you just confirm what that was again? Yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, that's, um, and maybe your uh, CAO wants to comment more on it, but that's, um, for the subdivision, you're paying the expenses, but you're getting reimbursed. And I forgot to write down who it was from, but 75% uh, of the costs. Okay. It's the offsite sanitary project for okay. phase three. Okay. So we, it's in municipal right away, we pay, we pay the invoices and then we invoice the developer. They pay us back. Once we invoice them and we receive the funds, it's entered as a revenue. So that's why you see it broken out separate. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Actually, as you went through the, through the presentation, you did answer some of the questions that I had emailed <laughs> earlier, so so thank you. Um, and you couldn't answer the question about having that balance of reserves and, and TCAs, and, and I, I understand that. Um, so perhaps this is a good question, and I don't know if it would be for you or for Candace. 
Um, it's nice to see that long-term debt coming down. Um, I don't know, and, and I think I know the answer to this, and I think the answer is no. Is there an opportunity to increase the principal payments in order to bring down the interest? No. No, it's so no, 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 yeah. Okay. No. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you to you. Thank you for the presentation. You did answer many of my questions. Um, I just wanted uh, to ask you a question about the the hundred eighty thousand uh, dollar misstatement. And I know that we didn't have any, um, which was great. But I was just wondering if you could meet, give me an example of what. Oh, of what there would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the 180, I think I assume you're referring to the chart. It has yes, chart. probably 180,000. Yeah. So that's materiality. So yes. status. So what we look at, uh, so an example would be if we came across um, that payroll hadn't been, so you, the first payroll of the year was January 7th. So half of it related to the year to 2021 and it wasn't recorded. We could live with that. We could still give a clean auditor's opinion, but we would put it on that so council was aware that, you know, the statements are good, except, you know, there is this missing. We can still, we don't think that's going to change any users' opinions of the financial statements or decision making because of the statements, but we would put it there so that council was aware of it. Yeah, so, thank you for giving me an example. Yeah. yeah. Council, any other questions, comments? I just have one then. I remember back eight years ago when you sat down with us and said, uh, you need to do better. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> um, if a disaster ever struck, uh, Aspinall Norwood would be in some dire straits. Yes. We'd have to borrow. And uh, I just want to say that we listened and thank you very much for your uh, kind words in the day, even though they were strong words. <laughs> and, and we listened. So Sometimes those words are needed. So yes. Yeah. So I just want to speak out on, on behalf of all of council that uh, staff has done a tremendous job all departments going forward to help save money and put money in the reserves too and we did say back in the day if you saved it it's yours uh you get to keep it for your department and uh, we stuck true to that and i'm hoping that that will continue on so okay if there's no more uh, questions comments or concerns then i'd be the motion then to uh to receive this Delegation, then, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird. Isn't there a longer oh, recommendation there? You may want to read that out. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so, recommendation that the Council of the Township of Aspidale Norwood approves the 2021 consolidated financial statements of the Township of Aspidale Norwood as presented, and further that the Council of the Township of Aspidale Norwood authorizes the Mayor and the CAO Clerk Treasurer to sign the acknowledgement of Council. Yes, there was more. Yes, there was. <laughs> Deputy <laughs> Mayor Burke, seconded by Councillor Ward. Any other questions? All in favor? And that's carried unanimous. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for answering all the questions. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> but the pie charts really help us. <laughs> help me too. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Travel safe. Yeah. So next, we're on to staff and committee reports. Um, our six, I guess, uh, would be Kyle Beacock, who is our water, wastewater and operations manager. Kyle, the floor is yours, sir. Sorry, right, on it. All right, good afternoon to you, Mayor. Um, so our six here, we've got uh, the... Um, Westwood Well up, uh, update report. Um, this is for council for information. Um, I won't go too deep into the uh, into the background, as I'm sure you're aware. That report last October 26th um, kind of summarized where how we got here. Um, but uh, so essentially, we went to complete some maintenance uh, this spring um, and found that uh, the, the filters were completely plugged at the library. Um, the cartridges were full of like very fine salt and clay. It kind of came as a bit of a shock to us. We hadn't experienced any problems with the well to that date. But uh, so anyways, I directed the operator to uh, to try to flush the well with a garden hose, um, at which time we ran out of water in pretty short order and uh, experienced really slow uh, recharge on the well. Um, I got in contact with the 
with Herb Lane, the person that uh, drilled the well, um, to kind of explore some options, what could have possibly went wrong. Um, he gave me some uh, gave me some information, but I decided it was best uh, to go back through Peterborough Public Health and uh, through their consultant uh, to complete some work. So, uh, anyways, we waited some time to get some quotes and uh, some a scope of work from the uh, from the um, consulting engineer. Um, they came back with uh, this Ontario uh, well, Ontario water well fracturing. Um, they thought they were going to maybe have to try to fracture the the pores coming into the well, the, the cracks, um, in order to remove some of that sediment and get it to, to recharge again. Um, they are also going to down camera the well. Uh, this isn't something that like a local contractor could take care of, so uh, it did take a long time to get these uh, this company to come in as they're pretty specialized. Um, so, anyways, they uh, once they finally got the site, um, they agitated the well. First, they pulled the, the well pump out and realized that the uh, Herb Lang, who had first put it in, um, had sunk the well pump right to the bottom of the well, um, whereas it was supposed to be four foot higher um, to keep it off the bottom. That's common practice, so I'm not sure. I think there was some miscommunication in the field between the engineer and the, the well driller. So that was causing issues. Um, so there wasn't as much sediment in the well as, as we initially thought because uh, staff had initially thought that that well was pump was set where it was and I'm thinking there's four or five feet of sediment in the well now like what's going on uh, anyways it turned out there was about three centimeters of uh, sediment in the uh, bottom of the well so they agitated that they pumped it all out um, and uh, got it running so it was pretty clear they have noticed though that the recharge rate was a lot slower than the, when they initially drilled the well and did the pump tests um, now um, they're saying that they're going to be adequate supply for the library I'm not completely um, satisfied yet until we do some more longer term kind of monitoring seasonally to see if, if it is going to be adequate. Um, I mean, I realize that there's there's pretty minimal use there, but um, you know, if there's a, a summer camp or something, for example, we need to make sure that it's going to uh, to supply the well that's uh, or the water that's needed. Um, so yeah, that kind of brings us to where we are now. I know that uh, I think from the looks of some emails, Peterborough Public Health kind of wants to there's your well, thank you. Um, but uh, anyway, so we have to circle back on on them. Uh, there needs to be some further discussions. And uh, yeah, so it's my opinion that we should probably be doing some more monitoring for a year or two. Um, if there's any questions or comments or. Sounds good to me. All right, uh, thank you, Mayor Burke, please. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the update on that. I know we've been asking for it off and on for the last uh, little while, and I know it was kind of out of our hands. Um, certainly, I, I know we do, we are to receive this report. There's no recommendations attached, and I agree 100% with you. I'd like to keep that monitoring going because, as you are likely aware, um, that well was now um, has sulfur and yeah. The, the other one did not. So if they're looking at, um, you know, both quantity and quality being equal to the previous well, to this one that had to be um, that had to be drilled, it's certainly uh, the, the quality is not there in my opinion, and I think the sodium is higher um, from the previous well. To this, it is um, yeah quite quite a bit higher. So between the sulfur and uh, <clears throat> and the salt, um, I do not want. The health unit to have their hands washed of this because I think if we're going to move forward um, and that water needs to be treated, it needs to be in their dime and not ours. So that's my opinion. So thank you for the report. Yeah, for sure. There will probably be another report coming forward after uh, <laughs> after our meeting with Peterborough Public Health. So this is definitely stay tuned. Yeah. It's not the end of. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Um, Councilor Walsh? Here's to kind of build on what Deputy Mayor Burton said. So we you will be meeting or we are meeting with people of public health and again. Yes. Yeah, we'll be reaching reaching out for another yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of the same opinion as Deputy Mayor Bird is such don't think we're done here yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And appreciate all your insight and uh, uh, explanation of what's going on. And yeah, I don't I'm like you, I don't think we want to be signing off yet because we're not in a good place yet. No, yeah. And yet, uh, Councillor Ward. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I was just wondering. Uh, I agree with everything that Deputy Mayor Bird and Councillor Walsh um, have said. I, I was just uh, a question. 
Is the Westwood Library through 12 Center Line, Hastings, Ontario, was that just a, a mailing address from Dion Wills, or was that just an error in uh, in the uh, location? Because it should be Asphodel Norwood, not Hastings. Mm -hmm. It's just a typo in the report. Right, okay, because it's on almost every page. I just wanted to make sure that that was identified, because it could be the mailing address. Well, I think Hastings. it's because the Hastings is K0L1Y0, but it's now changed. It's now changed. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. And thank you for the report. Any other questions from council at this time? Um, Candace, do you have a follow up possibly? I do. Um, thank you, council, for your support and being in alignment with what township staff are thinking. Um, based on the discussion today, um, the there's no staff recommendation in the resolution, um, but it can be amended. If so want it if they want to like if you don't you're not handcuffed by that that motion that's in the recommendation of the staff report if you want something stronger want a little stronger language is if you want stronger language you're not handcuffed to what's in there is I guess well we, yeah. you're not making a recommendation so you're still talking so we're still um, talking right so, now yes so i think that's fine i just okay. didn't after knowing the report was coming i just didn't want to have a recommendation that yeah we're signing this off like no um i'm <laughs> very glad to see staff no. in alignment so okay do we need these okay this is a question to the two of you who have been dealing with it in public health do you need a stronger recommendation from council moving forward to say something more specific or no or I think maybe will that be next time? <laughs> Bring a report back next time. You might need something. Yeah, yeah I think I think okay. probably probably next time because I think okay. they're probably going to formalize their position outside of an email. Okay. I suspect. Okay. Um. So we will be bringing back um ex exactly where they where they stand um on it, and I just hope that okay um we don't have to spend a bunch of legal money on it, but um, stay tuned. All right. Just the idea is that. Uh, as long as staff know that the council's not happy with how the results are, how the law yeah. is at that library, and, and yeah. it's it's been spoken of, and it is recorded that uh, councils would back up staff on that in a heartbeat, saying yeah. we're not happy, and we need to get this fixed, and it needs to be safe, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Okay, so that motion then. Uh, if there are any more questions, comments right now? No. Okay. Uh, motion then would be that we accept this report then uh, with the Westwood Library Wealth for information. Councillor Walsh, seconded by Councillor Archer. Any other comments? All in favor? That's carried unanimous. Thank you. Kyle, you're going to be on the floor for a little while, sir. <laughs> R7. So Kyle B. Cocker is our water wastewater operations manager, and this report is regarding the Norwood drinking water system inspection results. Um, okay, through you, Mayor. Um, as you just said, this is for the Norwood Drinking Water System inspection results, and this report is also, also for information. Um, so on June 21st, uh, MECP uh, conducted a focused compliance inspection of the uh, Norwood Drinking Water System. This included, uh, they come out physical inspection of the facilities, detailed review of all the documentation, sample results, compliance data, SCADA trends, um, et cetera. Um, so this was back to the previous one, which was last October 5th. Um, so typically these happen annually, but um, yeah, they can happen more, more frequently as unannounced inspections. And uh, it was nice this time as she did both of our systems while she was here. So little efficiencies <laughs> uh, make my life easier. So um, the conclusion for this one, so we received a 95.31% compliance rating um, or a 4.69 inspection risk rating for the period. Uh, so where we got hit on this one was um, our distribution chlorine analyzer. We're having some power issues on May 4th um, in the Norwood system, um, power bumps, et cetera, lots of alarms coming in. And during that, um, the operator on call at the time was checking the trending uh, to make sure that everything was kind of coming back online as it should, um, which it did, except sometime during this period, uh, the UPS, which powers the Marine analyzer, um, it failed. And uh, unbeknownst to us, <laughs> the uh, analyzer did not alarm out through the uh, Falcon security system. Um, so since then, we've had an electrician come in and wire a relay in. So that now, if that analyzer malfunctions um, or loses power, it'll also trigger an alarm out. Um, it just uh, compounding errors um, 
Just so happened that this analyzer also did an alarm out through our redundancy system, which is our NIT Win 911 system. Um, there was a problem in the database uh, that Suma, who's our computer en or our SCADA engineer, um, they found this the next day. They were able to fix it remotely uh, fairly easily. So, yeah, this is the one that got us on this one. Um, other than that, it was a, it was a clean inspection. So, um, and there was no... There was no um, best management practices. We just had to rectify the issue of the, the uh, analyzer not alarming out if there's power loss or malfunction. So um, if there's any questions or comments, uh, I'd be happy to take them. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, Councillor Ward, please. Uh, yes, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, uh, with the next report, uh, when there are things like SCADA and UPS, which we know is uninterruptible power supply and SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition. If it could be a glossary or um, some kind of an appendix that everyone would know what those mean. Like I know oh, yeah. it's mm -hmm. because yeah, you, it's the world that you live in, <laughs> but when we are looking at it or anybody that else is looking at any of the, um, find out exactly what those terms mean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was just wondering if that might be something sure. in the future that might be able to be done. And I, there was one comment that says um, that some of the, it was not reported in the log um, book. Is that because you didn't know about it until this was done or? Yeah, well, essentially too, it's because the operator didn't respond to site immediately. Okay, got because it. we were able to dial in remotely right. to check out all the issues from the power okay. failures. So yeah, it wasn't documented in the book at that time. But okay, I was so, just, just curious about the, the timeline with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the only other thing that I noticed, if I may have one more question, yes, you may. Um, that I, I did see that some of the operators that help you from staff um, won um, their water um, distribution sub, um, system class one has expired. And it looks like um, the other person, uh, their expiry date was in January of 2023. I was just wondering if they have updated their oh oh yeah the yep. water so yeah yep. that's yeah 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 okay thank you. And a keen eye there. <laughs> a lot of reading. It's a lot of reading. All right. Any other questions, Council Deputy Mayor? Um, thank you for you. Just to follow up on Paula's, and this this isn't, isn't just water related. Um, as far as a, a glossary of uh, acronyms goes, I'm wondering, as the new term of council, if we, we should have a glossary not only for water, wastewater, but um, a few other things, council gets them, they have it in their possession, then it doesn't have to be included in the reports no. if we don't know something. Under USB can, stick. We can, is it on the, yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and I don't know because there are so many acronyms. I, I can remember at county we had a binder with acronyms, and yeah. I did refer to that for a while. And, yeah, and I gave one out long. during the orientation back in 2018. Okay, um, okay. we can circle back to wondering. it and update it, and then maybe uh, you save it on your desktop. Yeah, yeah, and then we can and then save it on the desktops of your new laptops, yeah. and then you can, it's like right there, and so you don't have to find a USB stick exactly. or you don't have to go find a paper copy. We'll save it right to your desktop, yeah. right? and then that just saves reports like yours. You don't have to put that in. We, yeah. we can find it, it's right there. We just, yeah, we can thought. do that. Okay, and um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, anyone else have anything? All right, thank you. So, then our recommendation. Is that we accept this report for information again? And thank you, uh, Councillor War, seconded by Councillor Archer. Any comments? All in favor? And that's carried unanimous. Okay, thank you. So at the beginning, uh, when we opened up the meeting, uh, we amended the agenda then to take on the addition of the staff report R11. So you talk about efficiencies. We're going to send you to R11 right now, sir, and that way your your reports can be done instead of waiting eight times. <laughs> so R11 is the state's inspection results. Yes, sir. Um, again, this one's uh, for council's information. Um, and as I mentioned previously, she was able to do both of them uh, at one one shot this time. So uh, and she's going to try to make that more of an ongoing thing, um, which is excellent for. For staff. Um, so on June 21st, uh, the MECP uh, conducted a focus compliance inspection for the Trent Use State's distribution system. Um, this includes a physical inspection of the facilities and all the documentation, logbooks, um, as I just went through with the Norwood inspection. 
so on this inspection, uh, Township received 100% compliance rating, 0% risk rating for the uh, period, and there was really no uh, recommendations from the ministry for this inspection period. Short and sweet. Questions, Council? No? All right. I need a motion then that we accept this report uh, for information and also Deputy Mayor Burke, Councillor Walsh. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Matt Sturry. Okay, Kyle, I think you're off the hot seat. Excellent. Right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Yeah, you as well. All right, next on the agenda then would be R8. Ed Whitmore is our Chief Building Official Planning Coordinator. And this report, Ed, is regarding the dog control bylaw. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have a, a bylaw today, 2017-47, and that regulates all dogs within the township. And uh, once in a while, we update it whenever council deems it advisable. And it was brought to our attention a couple of weeks ago, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture, that they made some recommendations to uh, exempt livestock guardian dogs and herding dogs from annual licensing fees to help decrease the cost uh, for livestock producers. And so we went through our existing bylaw and uh, we didn't think that the uh, recommendations that uh, the OFA, so we decided to uh, throw them into our, our uh, bylaw, updated a little bit, added a couple definitions, bona fide farm or farming operation, and we added the definition of a herding dog. We also updated the definition of livestock guardian dog. We, we did have them exempt from, from uh, buying annual tags, but not uh, from a kennel license. A kennel license uh, is $100. And so farmers would generally, if they had a dozen dogs or so, they would pay $100 and uh, just go under a kennel license. And so uh, they can use the $100 in their pocket just as much as anybody else can. And so we uh, thought that it's not unreasonable. Uh, they're providing a good service for the township. So we added section 2.4 and included them into the exemptions. And that's about it. We have the old bylaw and the revised bylaw, which is very similar, and uh, the OFA recommendations, just so that you see that it's from them directly. And uh, I spoke with their animal control officer. Uh, she actually thought that uh, it wasn't a bad thing to charge them $100. Then we have a record of who who, uh, who the dog may belong to, and it might make it quicker for us to locate the owner. But I think we'll probably only have a few anyways, and we'll have, a, uh, like with staff, we'll have a, a list of them anyways and make sure she has a current list of anybody that uh, contacts us and uh, try to keep an updated list for her. And uh, that's about it. If there's any questions. Uh... Okay, thank you, Ed. <clears throat> so, uh, Councillor Moore, please. Uh, thank you, Community Mayor. Uh, thank you for the updates, it's very clear. Um, I was just wondering, and I don't know if you may know the answer or if it's uh, for our CAO, I was just wondering, uh, with regards to dog tanks, like when we're talking about, you know, uh, you know, having dog tanks for animals, do we know how many dog tanks are issued within our township, or do we have a number uh, on that? Like when you're saying trying to identify maybe farm animals that are used for herding and you know keeping track, I was just wondering about tracking procedure. Um, so um through you, Mayor, there we have a, a module in Keystone, a dog licensing module. So all of the dogs uh, are registered in the system. So we know their names, their type, 
their approximate size, their color, their markings, are they spayed, are they neutered, all of that is in our system. Um, and then the resident is to let us know if an animal is to pass on. Um, I can tell you that there is many dogs currently within our township that are unlicensed. It has been flagged um, as uh, something that we need to do a bit of a campaign at the beginning of the year when it's time to purchase licenses. Um, I would say based on, I know that we collect about $6,000 to $6,500 a year in, in licensing. And so you got to think there's about 500 to 600 dogs that are registered um, in the township approximately. Um, and obviously that number floats. Um, I'm just wondering if the animal control officer, I was unaware, brought that to our attention. I'm just wondering... We do have other mechanisms in place where a resident just registers an activity with us, but there's no licensing or costs or fees. So it could be a, a simple, um, just uh, like a log in, in the office. And if they, you know, are a new a farmer uh, purchases an operation and they decide that they would like to have guardian dogs didn't have them previously, then it's just something on our website to say to please notify us and then we can have it. So that the animal control officer, I can understand, she just kind of needs to know those properties as to which ones are exempt versus which ones aren't. Um, and that's up to us to educate her on, on that. So, and how would we know if we're losing? Um, so I'm wondering if we need a registration process, no fee, no licensing, just a, hey, to let you know, here's my number, my farming number. I'm going to have six of this type of dog on my property. This is my operation. And we just have that in our system as a log and let the animal control officer be aware. So at least she can do her job. If she receives a complaint on one of these properties now with no kennel license, because she issues the licenses. So now that she's lost that ability, um, she won't be able to kind of know which properties, if there's any additional. Traditionally, it's been pretty static. Um, you know, a lot of the properties, they don't change. If they have these operations, they continue for, you know, decades traditionally. So we can give her a base list now and then just... And that doesn't have to change the bylaw. We could just ask for that registration list on the website. Sorry, I got detoured. No, that was a great answer. You're welcome. Stephanie Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you for you. Thank you very much for adding the valid farm business registration number. I think that's an important piece to this. Yes. Um, I don't think that was in the recommendation from OMASA or um, okay. it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad to to see that in there. I know we requested that, and I I think that's an important. Piece. Thank you. Anyone else at this time? Uh, just more of a comment. I just I think thank you for recognizing the OFA and, and adding that in. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm in alignment. We need to uh, think how we can boost up our campaign to sell more dog tapes. Because again, on the canvassing trail, there's a, there's a lot of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No more comments. Then. Uh, the recommendations there before you that we accept this report and that it's for information and that we authorize staff to present a draft bylaw 2022-48 during the bylaw portion of the meeting for council's consideration as well as what our CAO has recommended forward to have some form of log. So motion by Councillor Walsh, seconded by Councillor Archer. Any other comments? All in favor? And uh, it's carried. Thank you. All right, Ed, you're finished, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so R9 then would be Candace White, who is our CAO, clerk, and treasurer. And this report is regarding the Alpine Street Extension Agreement. Candace, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, as Council is aware, uh, consent application. Um, was brought forward for the Carmichael lands on the west end of Albine Street. It was identified as consent application B-10-22. I have included uh, with the staff report the decision from Peterborough County Land Division as they are the approval authority for consents within our township. And you do see a condition um, to decision was made with five conditions that need to be satisfied in order for the consent to um, be uh, finally approved. All of them have been satisfied, including the rezoning, which has been identified in the staff report and has come across council desk previously. The final um, condition is 
um, item number five in the condition of decision, which is to ensure that the land that is going to be retained by the Carmichael property or Carmichael family once the property for phase four is severed um, has a frontage on a municipal road allowance. So in order to ensure that an Albine Street extension agreement needs to be entered into just to ensure, ensure timing of the development and to ensure that that asset and um, is taken care of to the standards of the municipality, you will see that basically all of the things that council would be concerned about in regards to ongoing maintenance, um, capital costs up front, um, as well as timing of such is all to the satisfaction and the direction of the municipality. So that'll be a conversation between the developer and municipal staff as we as we move forward. Uh, as it's early days uh, with phase four, it's very difficult to put time frames to it because it would just have to come back and be amended. So the blanket clauses, traditionally the developers don't appreciate those clauses as they like to know exactly what it is they're being held accountable to, but timing um, is crucial in regards to this. Um, as we know, Albine Street, the from Marion Lane to Keeler Court, as of, as of now, it has been a struggle uh, with maintenance. Um, potholes uh, tend to be running rampant up there as construction activity has been very difficult on that road. There's ongoing discussions with the developer. There is language in this agreement to try to prevent that from happening and just extending it further to the west. We need to get that street sewn up and at least a base course asphalt um, so that we don't have to deal with it um, through phase four construction like we have during phase three. That is the intent, that is the hope. Um, and that's what the language in the agreement states. Um, it is my understanding that if council enters into this agreement it, and uh, all parties enter into it, as far as the agent, which is DPH developments, as well as the Carmichael's, um, once that's executed, it is delivered to Peterborough County. They, it's my understanding that that is the final condition of consent and then the consent will be finalized and the property will be severed. I will leave it to council for any questions. Council, Deputy Mayor Burke. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you, Trudy Minner. And I'll be just, just for clarification, I, I know the answer to this, but uh, when that is extended west to have that frontage and that cul de sac is put in place, that um, cul de sac is completely legal for trucks to turn around, fire safety, all of that. Um, the key is that it'll be built to OPS specs. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, it will not be a cul de sac that you see at Maple Avenue East. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I was checking. <laughs> Don't forget the sidewalk. <laughs> uh, Councilor Ward, please. Yeah, thank you, Trudy Mayor. Um, is this um, the, uh, this will be kind of the realignment of the street at the same time? Or is this is separate? It's, it, this agreement is governing something separate because okay. this is really governing from Keeler Court, which is, I don't know if you remember, is which is the yeah. furthest West Street. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you yeah. spent some time there. So Keeler Court to the end of the call to sack that doesn't even exist yet. Okay. Um, that's that no problem. Yeah. But that said, though, the this project, I they're going to do it all at once. Right. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Seeing no hands, then the recommendations that we accept this report regarding the extension uh, agreement for information. And that you will authorize the mayor and the clerk to enter into an agreement with Joel Carmichael, Diane Carmichael, DPH Developments, and the Township of Bastogne Norwood for the proposed Alpine Street extension. Motion by Councillor War, seconded by Deputy Mayor Burt. Any other comments? All in favor? Are carried. Thank you. Okay, R10 on the agenda, Candace White, our CAO, Clerk and Treasurer. This is regarding the management action list, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So based on today's meeting, we're going to see the addition of a staff report in regards to an outdoor rink based on Mr. Haynes' delegation for November 22nd. Um, you will also see that um, based on the results of the election, there has to be a shift um, to approach uh, when it comes to committees and boards appointments, as well as budget adoption. Um, traditionally, we see de uh, departmental budgets coming forward at every meeting. 
um, but it won't be this complement of council that's approving the budget. So bringing a whole bunch of department uh, budgets forward today um, wasn't very efficient because I would have to deliver them again at the very next meeting. So you'll see that all of those um, have been bumped. Uh, that being said, what that does then require is um, an additional uh, meeting between November 22nd and December 13th to just check specifically uh, deal with budget. Um, I'm not asking for council to make a decision on the date um, at this meeting. I think that's something that we should have for discussion at the November 22nd meeting to ensure that all members are available. Um, you'll see what's coming up then on December 13th. You'll see the ATV bylaw on December 13th. Um, didn't feel it should be a decision of this council. Um, so it was pushed to the 13th. We have received the executed copy from Peterborough County um, with no changes as we uh, suspected. The lawyers did not make any changes as proposed by the staff there. Um, I don't think there should be anything else. Um, it's gonna be much, those were the biggest changes since you've seen the action list the last time. Unless Council, you want to make any changes or you want to um, add anything um, at this time? Deputy Mayor Burke? Um, not adding. I just have a question on the December 13th municipal insurance renewal. How is that looking? Because I know every year it is it's going up. Frightening. It's going up. And how's it? Yeah. It's going up. It's going up. It's okay. going up. Yeah. It's All right. Going up. Just so we're pre warned. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Ward. I'm hoping it's less than 20. Um, thank you, Drew Mayor. Um, I was just um, uh, actually wondering about the December 13th meeting um, as well, the aquifer capacity report. Mm -hmm. Is it, If it's a lengthy report, do you think that it can be sent out in advance or do you know how long the report is? So it's some, sometimes it's so detailed, it takes a while to you know, go through them. It's going to be a memo to the aquifer capacity report you've already received. Okay, so it's an it's not going to have all of that background that the previous aquifer and vulnerability study had, which had all of the diagrams of the core escrow deposits, um, the formation of the deposits, the history of the deposits. Um, it's going to forego all of that as you've already had them come across your desk. So what it, it's literally a memo. So if you remember the previous aquifer report was to prove that we have the 1,965 cubic meters a day based on our drinking water works license in the ground. That's proven um, this next step, um, which it may not even come in, in December um, is how much more? How much more is there? How much more are we comfortable with in a staged approach to, you know, we talked about drilling um, a uh, bigger diameter well um, by well number four. Um, when should that get triggered? We need to make some pump adjustments. When should that get triggered? So there's going to be a, a phased approach to that. Um, it may not come in December, but it's going to be minuscule in comparison to the last one. But I understand why you're asking. But if it comes in much bigger than I anticipated, um, I can push in a meeting and give you an extra two weeks to review. That would be wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. I think it is a good idea to have that extra meeting, no? Let's get the budget looked at and get it finished by December. As we know, getting any quotes out there for any materials or even trucks or anything like that needs to get out there as fast as possible in order to be the first in. Thank you. All right, uh, so the motion is then that we accept this report with the revision, revisions that have been suggested. Motion by Deputy Mayor Burt, seconded by Councilor Archer. Any other comments? All in favor? And then that's carried. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is C8, uh, Correspondence for Action. And this is County of Peterborough regarding an all inclusive pride crosswalk. Anybody have any suggestions or any thoughts on this item? We can receive it for correspondence, for information, or we can have a motion of support. What's council's flavor of the day? Deputy Mayor Burke? I'll make a motion of support. Okay, need a seconder? Um, I would second that with a comment. Yep, no problem, I'll ask for a comment. Um, I, I was just, uh, I have no problem with uh, seconding this uh, great uh, initiative. I was just wondering if, at some point, uh, our staff can come back with some recommendations uh, of locations where this may happen. I know it could be on a county road, but hopefully they would take some input from um, our staff uh, of where it may be located. 
in town outside of common. Yes, so it does ask, um, they want to know if your township is interested in participating in any joint locations of county township road intersections. And that's really, I think, the um, conversation for today is if there's interest and in, I mean, supporting the initiative for the county to take this on is good, but is there interest in staff putting the time into coming up with joint township and county locations and taking the conversation down that road? Who, so through you, Mayor, um, so if this was to be done, who, the, sorry, the way, <clears throat> excuse me, the way I read it, this would be taken on by the county, um, interest in participating in joint location is just to come up with a location and given me, it would be on a county road touching township property. Um, to me, this is a county project and they would be the ones doing the actual work. It's not coming out of, no, it's not. No. Well, it's not coming out of, as far as I know, it's not okay. coming out of our coffers. Okay. It is financially funded by um, Peterborough County, but I think it's more, they may, they haven't proposed any locations to us. Mm -hmm. So they may propose an intersection where there's a town, there's township infrastructure impacted. And they're also not going to put it in a community where it's not not supported or a location that yeah. we don't support so they want us to propose locations um that we would be okay with so if i just didn't want all of a sudden a township staff to support it yeah. and then give locations and then next spring you see them painted on the sidewalk and then you without didn't... any input is what yeah saying. and you guys uh, not okay. even knowing that it see, was even happening i just thought this was to me i read it as are you interested we'll look at it this is a first step, a report will come back. That That's the way I read it. That's not the way you're reading it. Based on discussion, okay. I think they kind of want, I think they're dealing with it at a county staff level. Okay. Where we're, I think it's a big enough impact in our community that there needs to be council discussion okay. as well. And they want proposed locations submitted by the 25th of November. Okay. So I just thought we could have a, if you support it and you're really, if there's no locations that you're opposed to, I think maybe that's an easier way to look at because I don't know where this is headed. Right. So if there's no okay. locations you're opposed to, then we can carry on with the conversation and I'm sure they'll implement it in the spring. Um, I can let you know through a CAO list um, mm -hmm. what, what's been approved and, and what location, but is there anything, any place you would prefer not to see it? how big it is, how small it is, no, where they want nothing. it to be. We're really, I think, have, it's in our community. It's on their infrastructure, okay. but it's a statement in our community. Okay. So we do have some say. Okay. So based on that, and based on the fact that we have two new township, there are two new council members coming in. And I, I think it may be more of a decision for new council as well. So we there's a motion on the table so we can vote on that, perhaps defeat it, and then start again if you'd like. And then we have a decision for, for uh, the council that's coming in on the next council. Is there enough room on the next agenda for a discussion? <laughs> um if they if it can if they wanted I, I didn't think you said if you wanted to defer it, that's fine. It's up to council, whatever you want to do. This is November 25th, so nothing will be happening for many, many months on this. So I would assume the cutoff date will not be tight. Okay, well, there's a motion on the floor and it's seconded. Um, all in favor? You just re repeat that motion. Just motion of support. support. There was no details, just a motion of support. Okay. Yeah, all right, so that's been defeated. So now we need a new motion then. Did you call the vote? You need to call the vote, sir. I'm sorry, all in favor, I did call all in favor. And nobody voted? No, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I should have said. Yeah, I need to pay attention, yeah, apparently. I, sorry, that's good. Go ahead. So I will make a motion to receive and defer this decision until uh, the new complimentary council comes in. Okay. Yes. Yep. Can I add to that motion that perhaps that um, in between that time that staff comes back with a couple locations that may fit the criteria? 
it comes back and we're allowed to do that. We don't have a criteria. Um, I don't have any criteria, but I can yeah, get no. we can get possible locations. It, it, yeah, it's and the crosswalk, so we would know the like how wide a crosswalk would be, right? There would be some recommendations that you know you could gauge because we can give a couple locations. That's fine. Yeah, just, just so yeah. that we I don't we, no, we can move. I can only think of better. one currently, yeah. but I can. can I we can bring a couple. And I actually back. put a date on that the twenty second because I'm sure that they would take our feedback at a later date. Yeah, they're not paying for sure. Anymore. No, exactly. So, so I, I don't think we have to worry about that November twenty fifth cutoff. I'm sure they would take our feedback, so it doesn't have to be that for the twenty. So I won't put a date on that. You want to help clarify for the deputy clerk? You got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I need a seconder for that then, right? Council Ward. Any other discussion on the motion? All in favor? And that's carried. Thank you. Very good. All right, next on the agenda is the Council Ladies All Reports. Anyone have anything that they're bringing forward at this time? Councilor Ward, please. Uh, thank you, Pew Mayor. Um, I just have uh, a couple items with the Cultural and Heritage Committee that we there will be a uh, historical talk at the Norwich Town Hall, November 15th at 7 p.m. The topic is how we began as a township. And all are welcome. As always, the event is free. And uh, the second uh, part, uh, we would... Uh, on behalf of the Cultural and Heritage Committee, uh, have a big thank you to the fire department and uh, Chief, uh, our, the fire chief, uh, Daryl Kane, for uh, moving a lot of the items at the Heritage Center and the completion of the flooring. It looks fantastic. It's um, it's nice to have it updated, and that will be the next task for the new committee going forward of getting all the items back in and. Uh, and having that space updated again. So I want, just wanted to make sure that we thank the fire um, department for helping and assisting in that move. Thank you. Anyone else? Deputy Mayor Burke, please. Uh, I just wanted to add, um, I had my printed report in the agenda. Under the um, the link to the Public Works Service Delivery Review, um, there was also, I think there's just a page in there in the presentation at the Municipal 511. Um, option and it shows construction zones and delays within the county. The county has signed on to that and certainly all the townships and lower tiers, it's open and free for all to use. So as a construction season ramps up again next year, we can add the, that information in as well. Um, and just a note for Remembrance Day at Westwood, I see that just to make sure everyone is aware, they changed the time from 9 a.m. to 8.45. I think that's just in order to give Legion members a little bit more time to get back to Norwood um, before 11. So if you're planning on attending in Westwood, 8.45 instead of 9. Thank you. Anyone else have anything on the ladies on reports? No? All right. Thank you. Next is CAO Clerk Treasury's list, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So just uh, one a uh, quick update, you'll notice on the action list, I was going to advise of the recruitment results for the building inspector by law enforcement officer position. Um, we had extended um, an employment offer to a building inspector um, who had accepted and was to start tomorrow. He advised yesterday at 6 a.m. in the morning that he has accepted another job somewhere else. Um, so um, we are back to the drawing board. So you will see the ad being re-released um, to start the recruitment process again, we have uh, plans in place for the uh, building bylaw and planning department. Um, the chief building official and I met this morning and uh, re rallied and shuffled priorities. So uh, we know that we're not going to have anyone on boarded until January. So we need to figure out the remainder of the year and um, no red flags or great emergencies to report to council from an operational perspective. Uh, we'll get by. Um, the, um, as you can see, Mother Nature has been exceptionally kind. The fitness center and the uh, 
Skateboard Park or All Wheels Park is moving along nicely. Both are scheduled to open and have the ribbon cutting um, on target, which is uh, great and exciting news. All parks have been closed for the season. So we have been uh, doing some work and some assessments. Now that the parks are closed, we are moving forward with the tree assessments um, due to the storm and to come up with budgetary items for 2023. Um, you're gonna see some uh, further I guess, information and more detail in regards to that in the parks budget, um, but just so you know that that work is, is commencing. And um, as it's the only, my only uh, chance to, to talk um, during the council meeting uh, freely without a, a staff report, um, as this is the last meeting of this complement of council, I did want to extend my uh, sincere gratitude um, to all of you as a group and as a team, as a, as a complement um, of council, it has been a sincere pleasure. Um, working with you has not been challenging or, or difficult. Um, you guys have been able to work through some very challenging um, times. You've made tough decisions when a, you didn't have a choice um, and that the outcome was rock or a hard place. And that's never an easy thing. And you uh, went through it with grace and dignity. And from my perspective, you continue to hold your heads um, very high. You have served this community exceptionally well. And a sincere thank you to um, Mayor Roger. Um, it has been a sincere pleasure the last eight years. Um, the table is going to uh, definitely uh, look much different, um, but I wish you all the best. And to Councillor Archer, uh, the last four years, sir, has been a sincere pleasure. Um, and I know uh, Aspidal Nord is a better place with you in it. So thank you for everything that you've done. Um, and that's it for me. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda, <laughs> general business. <clears throat> we might as well keep going on that thread um, for um, both our mayor, our outgoing mayor, and our outgoing councillor. Um, our CAO has a couple of certificates to, uh, to present to you. So I'm wondering, you think just like, maybe just right in help. here, if the mayor and, and Councillor <laughs> 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 Okay. Yeah, get a picture. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. I'll do you separately and then I'll do you together. Okay. <laughs> this is not the best phone, just so you know. I'm sure it's not as good as Melanie's, but thank you. All right, sir. There you go, sir. It was a pleasure. <laughs> And then three of you together. Okay. No, it's too bad. Okay. Very glad. Okay. See my bank account. Dropping now. Somebody's photoshopped my name here. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, if I have your tax, I'll send it for you. All right, anybody else have anything under general business at this time? We have to yeah. do something for the information. Outdoor business? I know that was under, that's going into the uh, action. Oh, actually, yeah, so you, don't, the, you don't need it under general business? No, no we um, added it to the action okay. list. Yeah. Sorry. No. I was confused. Thank you. That's fine. No, thanks. Anything else? Uh, um, we have Santa Claus Parade on. Uh, November 26th. Yeah. Yep. I want to make sure that the members of our audience, seven, seven o'clock, and line up for each night and the park fairgrounds. Yep. Okay, anything else? 
All right, I guess it's my turn to speak. Um, it's a bittersweet moment. Um, thank you very much. Um, it's been a good eight years, I'd have to say. Um, learned a lot. And like I said with uh, Baker Telly here today, um, we've come from the uh, brink of bankruptcy up to uh, a, a well-established township in the last eight years um, with uh, Candace, uh, you being the CAO clerk treasurer is probably one of the best decisions that council eight years ago had ever made. Um, the amount of monies that were saved and realized by having you at the helm um, has been astronomical for this township. And uh, working with you council, uh, as you all came in and everyone was new in this last term, um, it was a good learning experience, and I can't say how proud I am of each and every one of you who have, have brought yourselves up to speed. Um, you're smarter than me in most cases on a lot of the subjects, I'd have to say. Um, I'm more of a hands-on person. I do have the, the logistics of what goes on behind the scenes because I have the privilege of working with Candace every day. Um, whether we text or have a phone call about different businesses in town. I mean, that's just the way that works as mayor. It's a, it's a part-time job as mayor, but it's a full-time phone. So that's how that works. But uh, I can't say enough of how proud I am. It's like a, a father sending their kids off after being graduated. I just, it's, it's just, it, it's amazing how far we've come. And I'm, I'm very proud of everyone. I'm proud of where we are in the township of how we are today. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very confident with you as council going forward, even with the new complement of the council, that you will see the future come to Asphodel Norwood. And we will have uh, a lot more homes that the government has mandated for us, as well as we're going to have commercial industrial here one day too. So it's all about jobs. And, and I would be remiss if I didn't say shop often, shop local. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. So basically, uh, we have some uh, members in the audience here today too, but uh, our next item on the agenda is a closed session. So what we have to do, sir, is we have to basically uh, shut down our meeting and use folks have to vacate the building as well as our deputy clerk too. So thank you very much for being here today. Yeah. Okay, so I need a motion at this time then to uh, suspend our regular meeting at uh, 2.52 p.m. and that we enter into a closed session and that this one item has got to do with regarding personal matters about an identifiable individual including municipal or local board employees in the accordance with section 239 of the Municipal Act of 2001. So I need a motion then please. Councillor War, Councillor Archer, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so we reconvened uh, into open session now. The time is uh, 4.08 p.m. Um, and then uh, we'll have the bylaws read, please. Being a bylaw to provide for the regulating, restricting, licensing, prohibiting dogs running at large and for providing kennel operational guidelines for control of all dogs in the township of Aspinall, Norwood, be read at first, second, and third time and numbered bylaw 2022-48. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Councillor Walsh. All in favor? Carried. Being a bylaw to authorize execution of a development agreement between Joel Carmichael and Diane Carmichael and DPH Developments Inc. and the Corporation of the Township of Aspinall and Norwood be read a first, second, and third time and numbered bylaw 2022 49. Motion by Councillor Archer, seconded by Councillor Walsh. All in favor? <laughs> Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Aspinall Norwood held November 8, 2022, be read a first, second, and third time and numbered bylaw 2022 50. Motion by Councillor Archer, <laughs> seconded by Deputy Mayor Burt. All in favor? Motion to adjourn, sir. And a motion your last to time. adjourn. Councillor Archer, <laughs> seconded <laughs> by yep, uh, Councillor War at 4 10 p.m. And thank you very much, All in favor. All in favor. And we're still being recorded.